the generative models that are creating image, voice, video will become more prevalent on the infrastructure side and also on the device compute power side. It's a perfect setup for the smaller models to be more popular. My big idea is uh, on-device and smaller AI generative AI models will become more popular in the next year. If you're a frequent user of Uber, Instacart, Lyft, Airbnb applications, I'm sure there are many, many machine learning models already running on your device. What I'm more referring to is the generative models that are creating image, voice, video will become more prevalent in the same way uh, to run on device and within your applications, similar to these other traditional machine learning models. The models that we've seen in the last few years do take a lot of compute. And so can you kind of square that with how much compute we can get from something like a smartphone and also these models, whether they're getting smaller or how this kind of comes together? First, never underestimated the compute power on our smartphone is probably as powerful as a computer 10 or 20 years ago, thanks to Moore's Law, smaller sizes of 2 billion, 8 billion parameter models. That's enough compute for, for them to run on device. Um, and it can generate and create very robust experience already, be it text or image or audio. And some of these models, if they are diffusion models, they're intrinsically smaller than large text models to be very capable. Another new set of uh, tooling and also technology developed around distillation is if you have a very powerful large model, can be distilled to a smaller parameter uh, size model and still maintain a lot of capabilities uh, that large model contains. So both on the infrastructure side and also on the device compute power side, um, it's a perfect setup for, in my opinion, for, for the smaller models to be more popular. Totally. So I'm hearing a few things. I'm hearing that the smartphones are becoming more powerful. Some of these models are becoming more efficient. But that kind of brings us to the question of why. So why would we want to run these models on device? What are the advantages of that and also the disadvantages? As consumers and day-to-day -day users, uh, we are already spoiled by uh, real-time and very uh, performant, very sleek and, and real-time applications. If you're talking to a chatbot, if you're talking to a conversational AI, if you are adding filters to your video and images uh, on Instagram or TikTok, you don't want to wait for multiple seconds to load a new filter. You don't want to you know, wait for multiple seconds for the, the chatbot to respond to you. Um, those are many real use cases that can really delight and uh, improve user experience. Um, at the same time, it's also optimization for, for compute. There are a lot of more complex questions or video processing that requires going into the cloud. But largely, if it's... Um, Again, changing user experiences and improving sort of the visual and sound effect of things. Uh, it doesn't have to route through uh, multiple servers uh, going through a network. So both from a user experience and efficiency perspective, uh, it's, a, it's a much better design to run some of the models on device. Then the last part is just privacy. Uh, users do care about you know, if my meeting notes is taken locally, I probably will use this meeting note taker much more often True. than uh, knowing some of the data is being sent to a server and they're processing, uh, you know, a lot of my private conversations. So depends on the use case, again, for the application. I think uh, that also improves the adoption. Absolutely. And that has my wheel spinning for sure in terms of maybe this unlocks new applications. So on that note, you mentioned a few already, but where might we see applications pop up or where perhaps are we already seeing applications pop up with these on-device models? First come to mind is real-time voice agents. It's a very popular topic and it's something I'm very excited about. We invested in and work very closely with this company called Eleven Labs, and that's one of the areas they're spending also a lot of efforts on is not just having the human-like synthetic voice, but being able to handle conversations fluently with end users and to get the latency down and also to think about what type of real-time exchanges you want to have with your AI companion, your support agents, or any sort of life coach, I think, we do need to think about the modality and, and the latency in a much more improved fashion. So I won't be surprised if some of those uh, inference workloads are running locally coming into, into the next 12, 18 months. And as we think about how maybe these different models also interact with other parts of a smartphone, let's say the camera, do you expect this to also maybe change user behavior and what we can do? A hundred percent. You can actually reimagine the AR experience of if I point a camera to this room and I want to see a new surface and wallpaper and furnitures, 
the technology is already there. Like we、mm-hmm. can actually leverage、um, both generative AI and the camera, and also prompting interaction to create new experiences already of how we interact with the real physical life. And that's、um, where I also think a lot of on-device models. Will will play a big role of how do we interact with the 3D world, how do we interact with the physical world, and not just using the camera for capture, but also using it as a projector. Definitely. And let me ask you about economics then, because a lot of the models that exist today do rely on inference and sending that inference up to the cloud, and that costs money.、Uh, do the economics change if you all of a sudden have these models running on device on you know the smartphone compute that? Already exists. Like, do the economics actually shift, or can we come up with new ways of monetizing in this new world? It's a great question, and I honestly don't really have the answer because even for larger models, the inference price has been dropping really、True. significantly. For the optimizations to be done, if it's a very workload intensive sort of compute, let's say using your computer or phone, like I think will still have economics benefits, but、mm-hmm. I don't think it's going to substantially reduce the infrastructure costs for some of these applications. But architecting and structuring sort of the whole tool chain,、um, it does change sort of economics on the developer efficiency mm-hmm. and. Mm-hmm. and Iteration speed. There is pros and cons when shipping in the cloud, where you can sort of launch、uh, more continuously. On device has its own challenges because you kind of have to go with the updates with the application and、right. updates with, with hardware. So there is that side of economics that I think、mm. will have impact from how teams are being structured in、uh, launching models in a hybrid mode.、Uh, so I would encourage teams who are thinking of、uh, leveraging this technology、uh, sort of consider it more holistically. Super interesting. And as we think about that world, are there any players that you think really succeed here? Like in one sense, I could see maybe the phone manufacturers. I could also see maybe you know the manufacturers of wearables being able to introduce all kinds of new applications. Think of like wearing an Apple Watch, Fitbit, Whoop, things like that. Is it Nvidia that benefits in some way? Like who do you think actually benefits from this idea of the models becoming more efficient and these on-device models becoming a thing? Right now, I've、uh, seen more interest and、uh, enthusiasm from the、um, hardware development side. Whether it's chips,、mm-hmm. it's the phone makers.、Um, I, I do think there's also a lot of interest from the model developers as well of just like proliferating the model adoption across different、uh, setups and devices.、Um, but I, I think over the long run, it's probably going to impact the whole supply chain. We talked about some of these macro trends throughout. How do you specifically see those trends shaping up in 2025? And is there anything in particular that you're kind of putting your eye toward? This will、uh, sound more like a consumer investor. I've been like a hardcore infra investor, but <laughs> I am very excited about the mixed reality where generative models, 3D models, video models that really again makes the reality of what we are seeing today and through the camera lens, through the microphones, much more creative. World, even when sitting at home or when going on on a ride, that's the type of experience I'm very much looking forward to. I think the foundation model technology is pretty mature. The infrastructure is getting ready, so I'm personally very excited about sort of the new new consumer experience. <laughs> 